Welcome to the Bare Bow Project Podcast, developing fundamental skills for bare bow archers and bringing the excitement of bare bow competitive archery to you through the lens of some of the best archers and coaches in the world. Yeah, I'm a well-oiled machine. I can shoot all week. I learned a lot. Watch out next year. I'm coming for the guys next year. Welcome back to the Bear Boat Project podcast. In this episode, the Bear Boat Project team, John Demmer, Grayson Partlow, Frank Madonna, join guest Chrissy Lyons to talk all things Bear Boat NFAA. We'd like to thank our sponsors of the Bear Boat Project podcast, Yoast Archery Products. What tab are you shooting? Jaeger Archery Products. Innovator and supplier of superior quality, high performance grips for recurve and compound archers. XS Wings, used by the best. What tab are you shooting? Yes. <laughs> uh, tab, obviously. So we are here finally to talk about NFAA. Welcome back to the Barebow Project. We are here with the other lady of Barebow, Chrissy Lyons. Nice to see you again, Chrissy. Um, with my trusty, I don't even, I don't even know what to call you right now. My my trusty friend John Demmer. <laughs> um, with a couple of what are those are those cereal bowls over your they, left shoulder? They are. There? They are cereal bowls, and they Dude, will be those filled. Are those are nice. That's a big. They'll be filled I heard with you something. can put two boxes of Wheaties in those. I not. Te- I have not tested that yet, but I I told my daughter that yet. Or how, I told my daughter that, so we'll see. How old are you? What is Wheaties? Wheaties? Nobody talks about Wheaties. What? Oh come on! <laughs> People still talk about Wheaties. Maybe. <laughs> I actually heard that at NFA. Somebody else told me that, so I want to test it. Man, would you look at would you look at this guy? Hold on a second. Just listen. The, Zoom might shut down when this person pops up into. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh he's my back gosh, from hibernation. Like it's Grayson. Who is it? Muted. I'm I don't, I'm getting errors on Zoom right now. I'm not sure what's going on. They're saying there's a foreign. <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's just Grayson. Like he's like. How do I unmute myself? <laughs> <laughs> do I need to unmute you, Grayson? Yeah. No, I, I just muted him back. <laughs> you mute. <laughs> he unmuted Not himself. Sure the love. Yeah. There he is. Hey, what's Hopefully up, right. everyone? What's up, man? How much are you doing? You got a little Yo. bit of lag. Yeah, he's got he's got he's got the goat on the wall, dude. Did you check that out? <laughs> yeah. <There he> is. <laughs> <laughs> As a Chicago girl, I appreciate what's behind you right now. Well, there's an Here's ongoing. The there's a there has been a long-standing discussion, and although I think Grayson admits that MJ is the goat, there's a long-standing discussion about <laughs> LeBron, and the recent antics of LeBron have sparked that conversation again. So, what's up, Grayson? How are you? How much? How are you? You you get out hunting yet? Oh. Uh, I- did one sit, but I've been really kind of trying to get the house together. We're putting it on the market, I guess, tomorrow. So I haven't really had time to get out and hunt. Yeah, you said you were, you were unloading a bunch of archery crap. Yeah, I got rid of, I don't know, 20 dozen arrows at least. Just wood and aluminum. I still have a ton of carbon stuff that I'm keeping, but yeah, um, I got rid of stuff from the past that is no good well i saw you had like a whole bunch of longbow arrows you 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 uh stockpiled yeah Yeah, that was probably two-thirds of it i found another (laughs) i don't know dozen dozen basement somewhere so yeah i used to mess around with a longbow and traditional stuff a little more and i wasn't very good with it it was a good time it got me started he wasn't very good with it. He probably shot like five twenties. 
right? No. <laughs> no. no, it was bad. Is it, is it you're not good or everybody else is not good? Back it then, I was not good. I it was wasn't that good. good. <laughs> it wasn't that good, John. It it was it was good, but not that good. Like, yeah. But and compared you know, to what I can do now, it was really, really bad. Well, that's how you started, right? Yeah. You started with long. Yeah. Well, it's, well, just like everybody else, you know, you start on the lower end and work your way up. I think Grayson, what were you shooting? Like two thirties, two forties, NFAA with the with the yeah. longbow with arrow. Yeah. And yeah. then when I switched to bare bow, it it took an immediate jump from there, two seventies. But um, it took a little while. I mean, it was years before I was shooting 270. So I guess if you count the longbow time, it, when I jumped to bare bow, I, I think the foundation I had with the longbow really helped. How long have you been shooting? Um, five, six years now. Yeah. A long time, seems like. I'm not new anymore. You don't, you don't get to be the – I say I'm still a bare bow toddler. Yeah, I haven't yeah, quite grown up yeah. yet. Still learning. Okay. You yeah, you've accomplished a lot in a short time. So congratulations. Thank you. Well, Thank you. You've done. You've done awesome. Quite, quite frankly. I mean, especially since Lancaster last year. I mean, what a, what a. You were struggling with a with broken ankle or whatever. I think at the time, or broken foot or broken something. leg. Yeah. I think it was more. I was fangirling. I was fangirling because I was meeting all these people I had heard about, but never had a chance to meet. So, you know, people like yeah, Fawn, like yeah, I was yeah. super stoked about meeting Fawn and all the women. Like there wasn't at that point, I mean, we have so many more now. It's great. But at that point, there wasn't anybody uh, just like one uh, master's division um, woman shooting, but there wasn't really any girls around here doing bare bow. Now there's a ton, which is great. But when I went to Lancaster, I was just ex like excited to shoot with other women that did bare bows. So, yeah. yeah. Um, hold on a second. So, I'm, uh, I'm logging into the live feed to see if anybody posts questions. I want to turn my phone down. I almost dialed 911 with that emergency button. Uh, <laughs> Dillinger goes, who is that? <laughs> you, Grayson, when you logged on. <laughs> About Grayson? <laughs> yeah. All right. He's back. Well, we are here to talk NFAA. That entire week, there's like 5,000 tournaments going on. Tell us what, tell us what, give us the line item list of the tournaments. That, and obviously, let's talk about how you guys ended up. You got a couple. I was joking before the live feed went bad. I was joking that you got some cereal bowls behind you there. Um, Mine's probably going to be like hot wing bowl. Hot wing bowl? <laughs> yeah, one for the blue cheese and one for the hot wings. I think we decided here one was a fruit bowl and one was a candy bowl. How about we take one of those one chip challenges and buy a bunch of them and fill it with that? I am Ooh. not doing that. Just watching Dumber do that was traumatizing. I was like, oh, no. no, no, yeah, no. that pretty well, man. It, it actually wasn't, it wasn't that bad. But you definitely felt the burn in the belly. like. It was definitely hot when it got down to the belly. Was it worse in the gut than it was in your mouth? I, I would say it's, it was pretty close. That's the first time I had anything in my stomach that, that actually you can feel the fire. Mm. I've eaten a lot of hot stuff, but I've never felt the fire in, a, in the belly before. That was, I've, I've eaten food that uh, hot before. I mean, I like hot food, but I don't know. Something about you eating that shit made me never want to try it. <laughs> Who did you – did you tag somebody or did you – I didn't notice. Did you? Yeah, you're, you're doing one, and so is Gary. <laughs> you said, why not? <laughs> I, I would do it. You didn't tag me. No, but I kind of – I asked you in the video, and you said, yeah, he did. why not? He specifically said something about you doing it, Frank. All right, all right. Do you have to, like, send away for that over the internet, or is that something you can pick um, I, I picked mine up at Speedy, uh, Speedy gas stations. Oh, I don't make it a habit eating food from gas stations. Well, you got to get gas somewhere. I don't eat food from a gas station. Oh, God. I'll find one and then I'll do it. <laughs> That's fine. Oh, boy. Are you going to live stream it? Because I want to see this one. Yeah, I guess I have to. I guess that's the, 
that's 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 the that's the protocol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it and then I, I'm not I'm doing count what, me I, out. <laughs> count you out. <laughs> no, I, I'm with Grayson on this one. <laughs> not me. No. Got it. Okay. Got it. <laughs> I'll tag Maggie. I'm really having a hard time keeping this thing PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with disclaimer, if you're watching this live on Facebook, just close your ears at some, some points if it gets crazy. I might have to, like, mute John in the middle of a comment or something. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to let's get right. the top of the uh, so, do, you, do you want to take this one, John? Yeah, run down? Give us the rundown. Yeah. So uh, my schedule was, I think I land, or flew out Monday, Monday morning, uh, landed out there Monday afternoon, did some practice, uh, met up with uh, Rick Stonebreaker and Chrissy, did some practice, uh, found out my tune wasn't the same as it was at home. So that was a fun practice day, broke my biter plunger pin and oh, had yeah. to start over. <laughs> so Tuesday we did the uh, NFAA Field Nationals Day 1, which was the uh, – field round we shot uh 28 targets four arrows per target so it's 112 arrows uh we shot from oh well, what was the distance we shot from like 20 feet to 80 yards um second day was the anal or the hunter round which is similar to the field round except for just a slightly closer i think we shot that from was it 20 feet to 70 yards i think it was 70 yards so same 20, 28 targets, four arrows a target, so 112 arrows. And the third day, we shot the animal round, which was, uh, I think, again, possibly 20, 20 feet to 59 or 60 yards. I thought it was 65. It, was it, 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 it could be up to, up to a certain distance, and, and they, they have a, uh, a leeway for target distances and size that they can play with. So we shoot at least 28 arrows on that round. Um, if we miss our first arrow, we shoot a second arrow. If we miss the second arrow, we shoot a third arrow. So we score the first arrow um, that hits the target. So that was the field nationals. At the end of field nationals, that the second day when we completed the animal round was also the first day of target nationals for us. So target nationals for NFAA is one day of 60 arrows. We shoot a, um, a 92 or is it 96 centimeter target? Um, I think it's 90. It, it was 96. 96 centimeter target. We shoot from 40, 50, and 60 yards. For the, the 600 round, we start at 40, then we go to 50, and then we go to 60. Then the following day was the completion of target nationals, which we shot a 900 round. And we shot that from 60 to 50 to 40. So that completed two national tournaments in four days, which was a, uh, if you could do the math, it was a lot of arrows. It's 112, 112, 88, and 90. So that was a lot of arrows in four days. Um, then the next day was our qualification for the Dakota Classic. Uh, and we shoot that indoors, and that's also on a 96 centimeter, but it's a half face. So we're shooting at uh, a target that is much smaller. So it's Wait, like now you're 40. making me think. Was it 96 or 92? I forget. No, I think it was 92 <laughs> it was a, because it was I half figured face. half was 40, 46 centimeters. It was a half, half face. It was 40, 46 centimeters because I was freaking out about it. So we shot that on a half face target. So there was no option for a full face. And we did that the same, kind of the same way they did the 600 round outdoors. We started at 40, worked to 50, and then 60. Uh, Chrissy and I shot in the flighted class. The championship class finished theirs that day. And I think we came back the next day, right? Yeah, on Sunday. And, and we finished that. Um, and on Sunday, we had, some of us had the uh, indoor target or indoor national finals um some people get a little confused with that one we completed for that was for usa archery um usa archery indoor nationals was completed back in march and we got our national champions back in march and that included all the bare bow classes um both male and female um all age divisions so we all had our separate you know 
cadet and juniors and seniors and masters. Right. Um, that was completed. And what they did with that one was they took the top eight scores combined for Barebow. And that was going to be the first eight that had um, priority of saying yes or no for the invitation to shoot the indoor finals, which that was supposed to happen at NFA Indoor Nationals back in end of March. March? Yeah. yeah. But that got canceled. So they just kept prolonging it. And then NFA finally opened up and had their uh, their national championship extravaganza. So the one event that we couldn't participate in was NFA Indoor Nationals, which they held that on Sunday. And that was for just the pro division. And they absolutely steamrolled through that. They shot a 60 arrow uh, NFAA target style round. Um, and immediately following, they shot a U.S. archery uh, half. So they shot a 30, well, I guess they call it the Vegas phase. So they shot a Vegas 300 round. So they shot... 90 arrows as well on Sunday. Um, would have liked to have done that arrows. too, but you know, it, we weren't uh, invited. I think that's just because of just timing and space. Cause we were also shooting uh, the Dakota classic finals right when they were just starting their warm ups for indoor nationals. Gotcha. So it was a busy, wow. it was a busy weekend, fun weekend. Um, I was, able to have some time and got to hang out with Rick and, and Chrissy, uh, and do some nighttime fishing, uh, with my friend that I rode back with. Yeah. Yep. So did, um, so just, and uh, just a, a few things, the, the indoor final is similar to what our U S open was for outdoor target national. Yeah. So an yep. added, it's an added tournament that, that gives competitors like the, the feel of a world archery competition, shooting the head to head, shooting, you know, um, in the spotlight, stuff like that. An opportunity to shoot for a, uh, and different trophy and some money. Yeah. Yeah. And then yep. another quick mini segue. We just found out that, um, bear bows being offered as a bear bow class for me. Neems? Yeah. Doing? In Neems, they're going to do a, a side, side event like like we shot out in uh, the Roma and Grayson can probably touch upon that one yeah it looks like Neem's going to do the same thing that they do in Roma it's not going to be official like you know, compound and recurve but they're going to give Barabo an opportunity to go shoot which is really cool I think I saw that it's only going to be 60 arrows instead of 120 or yeah. well not 120 but uh, 60 and then typically the shoot off. So it's just the 60 and that's going to determine the winner. So, so you got to travel a long way to just to shoot 60 arrows. Yeah. It'd be a tough one. Long way it's a long go. way for us. Yeah. For us anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It's still a step Europe, in the right direction though. It. Yeah. It's, it's a step in the right direction. We're getting some, some more exposure on the world archery events. So if we continue to get, you know, quite a bit of support and, and get a lot of people involved in it, you know, it's, it's, hopefully just a stepping stone to something a little bit better in the future. Yeah. Hopefully our compadres and across the pond and the other, other countries nearby represent and show up. I'm sure there will be familiar names there that will be shooting. It'll still be a lot of fun to watch. Hopefully it's televised or on Facebook or something, but like, like you said, it's, well, we needed it. It's a stepping stone. It's a step in the right direction. But, um, yeah, it's a good start. I'd love to go shoot names one day. Definitely. 60 arrows, though. Yeah, probably not this year. Yeah, Maybe next tough. year. I don't know. I might try to do Roma and Neems next year. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what things are looking like around the world. Yeah, that too. How about the ATA being canceled? Did you see that? Yeah. And No, not to, not to derail the entire conversation, but you can't really blame them in some regards. I think the attendance was down by spec, uh, dealers was like, 60% of the dealers and there was like 30% or maybe vice versa of the registered, like, um, someone uh, watched the, the GP. I did a little bit. Video. Yeah. I skipped ahead. <laughs> I skipped ahead. I watched the beginning. I was like, I don't want to listen to that. I skipped ahead. So while I got to the, the meat and potatoes, I was like, okay. Yeah. 
but it makes sense. It's, it is what it is, you know, but so who were our finishers then, John? I mean, obviously we know you guys shot awesome with that and, and shout out to John Winker for um, his, he really stepped up the, stepped up the, uh, considering the dude was shooting like left handed like three months ago or some crap. I don't even know. You know, he stepped up and shot well. Um, that was at the end of the weekend. So you mm-hmm. guys shot that entire week or whatever and then had the finals in like the last day. Um, and I think, what did I see? Rick came in third for USA Archery, the, the final, right? Yeah. Yeah. We had, to be honest, we had kind of a weird, um, we had a weird tournament for that. It was kind of, it was kind of weird. They had Grayson penciled in um, as a buy. I, I tried to say I was Grayson Partlow, but they didn't <laughs> believe me. But I, I was trying. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that I was even signed up for that because I had been kind of in the mountains for a month. I hadn't been looking at emails or anything. <laughs> I see a couple of things on Facebook. People are tagging me, and I'm you know supposed to be at this tournament. I never confirmed I was going or anything, but yeah, I, I guess – said that um the email said if you're not gonna come then respond so i i didn't see the email so i didn't respond so they assumed i was coming but yeah, i was only it was, i was i was west i was probably only like 10 hours away like i could have drove up there and borrowed a bow and shot maybe but made some money and shot pretty like, ugly. <laughs> I, wouldn't want a cent. I would have missed the whole target <laughs> But yeah, it was weird. So they had like Grayson penciled in for a buy and we tried to bring it to their intention. So the first, the first round went kind of weird. We had five people and instead of doing like four versus five, they did something weird and ended up getting into the semifinals. Um, I got a, I got a buy into the semifinals. So for the semifinals, we only had three people. Um, the first round they had, they held two matches. We had five people. They held two matches, and it cut down to three. And then for the semifinals, we only had three people. So, yeah. Um, Jarrett ended up having a bye for the semifinals, and then I face against Winker. Um, Winker ended up besting me six to four, and then I didn't even have a match for the third place. So it was oh. like, yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of weird. Is that how that went? That's right. Okay. Yeah. So did Jarrett have to win a match to get to the finals? Yeah, Jared faced uh oh bugger. Um right. I don't remember. Yeah, oh my. Such a Litner? Huh? Litner? Yeah, Jason. Jason. Yeah, he had to face oh, okay. Jason. Yep. And so he uh won his first match and he was right in the finals and you had to win two matches to get to the finals as the one seed? Um Yeah, so yeah, Jared had to win one. I would have had to win one. Um, Winker had to win two. If, if oh, so Rick, you buy. I got you. Yeah, so yeah, if I Rick, think Grayson Rick, was supposed to go against uh, Jared. I think that's what was supposed yeah. to happen. Oh, I see. Well, isn't, that, isn't that a rematch from the classic? <laughs> it is. Yeah, so it would have been. Have the same way. <laughs> <sighs> you should have been like, listen, you shoot an arrow, give me your bow, and I'll shoot your bow. <laughs> You probably still could have made it look good. Um, wow, that is kind of wonky, though. The, the, yeah, it was a little. It was a little weird. Yeah. yeah. Eh, it is what it is. Yeah. The whole year. How about you? Yeah, the whole way. If it was, it was fitting for the year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I can say that. Twenty twenty. What else are you gonna throw at it? <laughs> Chrissy, this is your first time there, right? Obviously, you're going to shoot, right? Oh yes, for everything, yes. But it was like my first time seeing the finals, which was really awesome. And then Jared asked me to go in his coach's box, which I was really, really honored, you know, to do that. And uh, he figured since I had done the outdoor and I understood the clocks now and everything that was going on, I was able to at least help a little bit with that. And yeah. How do you think he's going to, I was going to ask, do you think he's going to ask you again going off of the results? Oh, I have no idea. (laughs) I have no idea. I can tell so. you one thing. If he's like me, I'm not asking Frank ever again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I had control over that. <laughs> I I didn't tell you about the twenty bucks that slipped in my pocket. So 
Oh, bugger. It's all good. No wonder why you're calling my arrows wrong. <laughs> Did he call your arrows wrong? I don't plan on I don't plan on being in your coaching box anyway. <laughs> you plan on me being in your coaching box. You'll be in my coaching box. <laughs> <laughs> so how did you fare out, Chrissy? How did your how did your NFA week go? Oh, it was exhausting. So unfortunately, I was not smart enough to rest before going into that. Um, I went to the three D boot camp, and then I was trying to uh, the so the week before that, I switched the new riser that I have, the uh, ATF-X. And then, um, so I was trying to get that ready for Barebow. And then I went to the uh, Barebow boot camp. And then I came back and I was like, oh, I got to figure out how to shoot this like 46 centimeter target for Dakota Classic because I didn't know about that until then. And 70 and 80 yards. So I spent the whole week like pouting that, trying to figure it out. I I never did get to really the the hunter or the animal rounds. Like I just was winging it for most of the week. Um, but, and then I did a high performance thing with my coach. And then six hours later, I was driving to South Dakota. So I was already getting there tired. And then uh, unfortunately, the, the person that was in the room next to me was not very quiet at like midnight, one o'clock in the morning, keeping me up. So I was like on E by halfway through the week. So uh, it was kind of fun to shoot at, at my wall because I did hit my wall about halfway through the, the week. John helped me through that. Thanks, buddy. Um, but uh, it was fun. I, I really had a good time with everybody. I learned a lot. I learned a lot. Watch out next year. I'm coming for the guys next year. But uh, I had a lot of fun. But it, it was a lot of arrows. It was a lot of shooting. I don't know if I would want to do that many um competitions in a row again like just that many days of because mentally you you are in a different place when you're competing mentally right like i'm still having a lot of fun but it's meant i've learned that just competing is is exhausting mentally like it's not just the physical aspects of hiking and shooting and but there's a mental aspect that that's pretty tiring to it all as well but yeah no i definitely learned a lot huh. Did, John, do you do you think that that has uh, like a total effect on you at the end there? Uh, only at the very, very end, like the Dakota finals. Um, by the time I got to the end, I was I was pretty drained by then. But I think that was more of not managing my time properly because we did sneak away and went fishing a couple nights um, and woke up super early the next morning. I think that was just the big issue for me. But, uh, yeah, I'm a well-oiled machine. I can shoot all week. I can shoot every day. I can shoot all day if I had to. Um, I don't have uh, many issues with that aspect yeah. um, because my form's down, my alignment's down. Everything is pretty, pretty much effortless, even though I'm shooting probably more poundage than most. I don't shoot as much poundage as, as Frederick Lundmark, but uh, I do – Still shoot more poundage than than most. I'm pushing 44 pounds, and I can just plug away all day with that. So, the for me, the animal round was kind of a learning experience because, or the not the animal round, the uh, field round was a little of experience trying to learn my equipment because my tune wasn't right. Towards the end of the uh, field round, I started figuring out, okay, how far do I need to aim off at this distance and that distance, and I put together a halfway decent uh yeah uh hunter round and put in a pretty good uh animal round i had one goof on the animal round at the second to last target um just had a bad shot so i had to shoot a second arrow um but other than that it was it was pretty good i was clean all the way through the second to the last target and kind of butchered that target and then had a weird wonky impact on my um uh, last arrow on the uh the last target but that went pretty good the target round went really good for me the 600 round was stout except for one bad arrow so i shot 59 great arrows shot a pretty good score considering you know weather conditions it was it was pretty good um it's always windy in yankton so 60 meters or 60 yards can be kind of tricky uh the 90 900 round was pretty good same thing 
a little bit of wind. We had you know, probably 12, 13 mile an hour wind at 60. And then as we got closer to 50, it, the wind started dying down towards the evening. Um, that round went really good, minus two arrows. Two arrows were subpar, but um, the other 88 were, were pretty good, pretty solid. Um, Dakota Classic was kind of, eh, started getting a little worn out, I think, just because of my, my uh, lack of preparation on time, uh, taking care of time-wise. But um, qualifications were okay. Uh, the head-to-heads were the head to heads were okay, not great, but they were okay. The indoor finals was okay. I can't say I was totally unhappy. Um, just didn't shoot good enough. Didn't shoot terrible, but just didn't shoot good enough. And I think a lot of that is just, I just took my field bow and threw my RZs on it and whatever happened, happened. They, they flew straight, but just, you know, wasn't that, uh, wasn't fully aware of my bow. I should have just shot my nanos for that one and probably would have been better off because I kind of figured that one out by the end where exactly they were hitting. But yeah, I was going to ask you both of you that did you shoot the same setup for everything or did you switch or you know from all the different rounds? I shot the same thing. I didn't really have time to experiment and play. Um, I will say that my tune was off a little bit, but. You know, you just roll with that. Um, so I think I would do things. Uh, the one problem I had that I was, I kind of just decided to go with it was I realized, unfortunately, because I, I just didn't have time to really prep like I usually like to do, um, was that I could not see my arrows on the hunter rounds, the color of the knock that I was using and stuff. So I had no idea. And plus I wasn't, also I have to aim, I'm gapping at 70 and 80. So going in to the hunt around, like the first time we did the 70 walk up, I actually missed, <laughs> like I missed the, the, the 70. And I, I think the next arrow as well. But by the time we got to the second time, I was able to like figure out where I needed to aim on that target to, to make it work. So I, I would definitely do things like I have things I know I wanna do next year, like have a variety of knock colors so I can see my arrows a little better, maybe get some better binoculars so that you know i can adjust as i need to adjust but you know i just it was still a lot of fun you just you have to roll with it you have to roll with whatever you're dealing with you have to roll with it and make it work so i did get to shoot a somebody else's target for the first time during the hunter round that was a interesting experience i've never done that you know and it, it did get in my head a little bit. It, that doesn't happen very often, but that did get in my head a little bit, and I just couldn't recover from it. So by 20 points, but I still had a lot of fun, and that that animal round was a lot more enjoyable than than I ever realized it was going to be. So I had a lot of fun with it. I like cool. John does it all the time. Oh, I, I was having a I was ha I never seen an animal target until we went and shot that. Like I had never seen I had never sh shot at one. So it was a lot of fun to. Uh, some of them are really nerve wracking because, you know, if you're like just off on your call a little bit or a little right or a little left, like it's a miss. Yeah. So uh, I liked that. It, it really kept me on my toes. So I'd like to do that again. Frank, I did shoot the wrong target on the uh, hunter round. You did? Yeah. What, Some what, of those guys are tricky. Accidentally, no, yeah, accidentally on purpose. So we shot. We shot the quad two targets prior and then I just got in a rhythm. I was shooting good the whole time and just got in a rhythm and I shot the same exact target I did two targets ago, but it was one can target you, after the switch. Can so, you explain that though? Can you explain what the quad is? Because there's going to be a lot of people that have never shot a field or a hunter round before that are going to listen to this. You know, they might be strict indoor shooters or, or outdoor shooters or whatever. Can you explain what that is? So for those that shoot the uh, the world archery field, they 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 know what a quad is. It's it's four sets of targets. When we get closer in distance, we start shooting our own individual targets. And this one was a uh, a fan, so we shot from four different stakes. And we just kept, you know, we say you shoot, you start on station three, the next arrow station four, next arrow station one, and so you shoot, you know, two arrows on the one target, two arrows on the other target. But for a quad, you have two tops and two bottoms. And depending on when you're up 
to shoot, bottoms always shoot first. So it's kind of funny because I was top and there was already arrows in it, but we shot that target two targets before I shot bottoms. So I just went up there. I was on a roll, wasn't thinking, just smoking everything. Got up first arrow, bottom target. And I hear, um, and I look at the target and I'm like, <sighs> that just like kind of, it didn't ruin the round, but it kind of like, uh, that was, it could have been like, was it just one arrow? Just one arrow. Yeah. That's not too but, bad. but you still think about that. You're like, that was still points, you know, and yeah. that could have made a great round even better. And but. what was your high hunter field? Uh, field sucked because I was still learning my, my crawl. So I actually had a couple misses on it because I actually had some wide right arrows that for whatever reason, my line wasn't working out there. Mm -hmm. And so by that time I figured out how far I need to aim off on the different distances. My hunter round was pretty good. I, I think I shot, I forget what I shot it in the four seventies or four eighties. So, okay. so that one was decent, not, not super great, but it was still pretty good. Um, so I think somewhere in the upper forties or seventies or eighties, somewhere on there. Um, okay. the animal, yeah, the animal round was pretty good. That was, uh, uh, what five sixty is, is 20. So I shot a five, uh, five fifty two. Yeah. Wow. So that was pretty good. So what give us, you know, we always talk about the, like a good score, or, you know, your, your high end scores, your good scores, your average scores. What, can you run through that? You got, I know, Grace, you, you've shot field hunter quite a bit. I haven't yeah, shot that stuff in, since I was a kid shooting Olympic recurve with my dad. So, God, I, I can tell you. I think great scores on the uh, the field round is probably 460s and higher. I think Alan, Alan and uh, Gary has shot that, and there's not too many people that have. And then the hunter is – Hunter is a little bit, usually a little bit better. And I think your great scores on that one's four seventies. Alan shot a monster score a couple of years ago. Um, and animal around is animal around is tricky. Like Christy said, some of the targets are oddly shaped. If you miss, you know, if you miss the center spot by three inches left, it might be a miss. Um, some of them, if you miss three inches high or low, it might be a miss. So they're kind of like, they're, they're shaped like animals. So you might shoot, like a, a grouse type thing where it's, you know, super narrow and you might shoot a goose where it's just not very tall or like a fox or something. Yeah. So I, I think uh, the only thing I can ever go off of is, is the trad guys from NFA because I'm not very familiar with, this is the first year we shot barebow and barebow recurve, I should say. And the barebow compound side um, is a little bit different. Everything's way more consistent. So you don't have those, the form variations in the, in the, you know, the, the anchor variations for the draw length and stuff. They're, they're pretty solid. Uh, Ricky Stark has put some monster scores in, so it's, you can't really gauge it off of Ricky because uh, it's just a different animal. And yeah. Think, barebow compound, they can get over 500 on a, a great day. Yeah. They're, they're pushing just over 500 on both of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, like a, a 570 indoor would probably be like a, 480 or 490 on the field round equivalent something like that yeah it's it's tough like i like i would say my hunter was pretty good it wasn't like a 570 indoor quality but it was like 560 ish um, yeah and was and the it, class was the class like was it world archery rules or yeah for yeah for the barebow recurve it's essentially world archery barebow not everything like the couple little nuances because NFA rules are, are much shorter, um, you know, in the write up. So they do not cover some of the stuff, but essentially uh, equipment wise, it's almost identical. Um, they just have different NFA rules. So like, you know, scoring and, and procedure and stuff. So it's essentially, you know, world archery barber rules. Oh, no, for, puzzle, no clicker, none of that. No, no, none of that. S same. Yep. Same ring. Um, but yeah, for a good animal round, I couldn't even tell you like, cause, cause Gary has, uh, the, uh, NFAA trad records for that. And that's like five thirties. So, you know, I, I would say something five thirties and higher would be pretty good for a, for an animal round. 
And max they, distance on the animal round is max distance. I want to say it's somewhere right around sixty. I think it's sixty-five. Um, is it sixty-five? I think. But yeah. But max, so yeah. so I so I think it goes eighty for field, seventy for hunter, and sixty-five for animal. Yeah. Okay. It's an interesting round. It yeah, there's a lot going on. A lot, a lot to it. You know, which star you shoot when, and all the different distances for the hunter round. It, it's it's pretty involved. If you wanna if you wanna set up a a bow to be optimized to score your highest, you really have to put some time into it. Yeah, yeah. You got to find a, a. You have to figure out a really good tune. Um, they also oh, we get we should ask like the kind of went over with the the field is. Um, Four arrows a target, 20 arrows, 28 targets, so it's 112. Same thing with a hunter. Uh, the animal is um, scored differently. So field field max is 20, 20 points, five times four. Uh, same thing for a hunter. The animal is traditionally, yeah, you have three arrows. You have to label your arrows. So your first arrow value, they put like a little tiny dot in, in those targets, in the animal targets. That's worth one bonus point. So if you hit the kill zone, which they have only two scoring rings on these targets, you hit the kill zone, it's 20 points, which let's say it's this big. And then the wound, which would be just on the edge of the body, would be 18 points on your first arrow. If you hit that spot, you get one extra point, so it's 21. But let's say you miss it and you have to shoot the second arrow, the scoring goes 17 for the bonus, 16 for a kill, and 14 for a wound. And then the next, if you have to shoot your third, then it's 13, 12, and 10. So it gives you an idea how that scoring works. So you wow. start dropping points if you miss your first target or your first arrow. Well, that, that adds a, a whole different sort of dynamic to the game, especially if you drop a point or, you know, you drop an arrow here or there. Yeah. Can really, you can really drop. That's like, it's like shooting a five on an indoor round. All of a sudden your score just goes. Yeah. It's it's that's the wild card round of the moves on the animal round. Yeah, that's the wild card round for the for the uh, field nationals. Is you can shoot solid the first two days, but man, if you shoot a bad third day, there's no coming back from that. <laughs> can you? Uh, that's definitely interesting. Yeah, it's definitely Chrissy? interesting and fun. Chrissy had a smoker round going, except for that one target where yeah, a little bit of a goof. I was I was so proud because I was like. Pretty close to Rick's stone breaker. I was kind of proud of that. Uh, and then let's, I let's, uh, look, she was close to Rick. She wasn't close to me. She was definitely <laughs> close to Rick. I was, I was close to Rick, and I was really proud of that because you know I didn't know what, what I was doing. Yeah, and you then, were with the I that, and I was like, that—that that was what was so so crushing to me. I I just wanted to you know kind of keep up a little bit. So yeah, I was you doing were pretty good. You were within a handful of points, and you were coming back strong. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chrissy, can you walk us through what shooting the 80 yard walk up is for you? Oh, so, <laughs> well, so here's me out in the field trying to figure out where I just need to aim for 80. <laughs> and I realized that I, I had to aim off the shelf and aim high because that was the only way I could even kind of aim. So I don't think I actually missed any during the field i think i think i hit i think i hit both times so it's like i think it's 80 70 60 50 right john is that what it is 80 70 yeah, 60. yeah. yeah 50 yeah. so i did i i actually struggled more with when i went to do the hunter round and do the 70 walk up so the first time i just i didn't know where i didn't know where i was aiming and i was too tired to really go and practice it the day before to figure out where i was aiming so uh, the first time was horrible, but the second time I nailed it, so I was happy. So that's that's how I operate. If I if I have a bad shot or or something, um, it doesn't usually you know bother me at all because I see that as a challenge. Like can I can I fix that the next time I go to do a shot? You know, so I, I'm usually not disappointed if if a, a shot doesn't go well. To me, that's a learning opportunity to go and do it next time. And what did you learn from last time? So. Um, they're, they're not easy. They're not easy shots. And I know not all women shoot the poundage that I'm shooting, which at that point was 35 on the fingers. So that it is difficult. Um, 
I'm, I'm sure there's plenty of women who have done it trad. I don't know how it's gone for them. Um, but it, it's not, they're not the easiest shots, especially like almost all my training was at 55 yards slash 50 meters. So they were, they were interesting shots. I definitely think that um, I will be working on that more and be a little better next year. But yeah, no, they're interesting. You can't be off on them because if you're off, you're going to miss the bail. Yeah, that, the 80 walk-up presents a unique challenge. People tend to get too maybe overly concerned on it because the 80 is only two arrows. That's all it is. And then 70 is only two arrows. Um, and for the hunter round, it's the same. It's only two arrows for 70. So people get a little too obsessive on those, you know, two, four, six, 30 points, you know, potentially 30 points. Um, so it, it's something that you want to learn how to do it, but it, I wouldn't sit there and just plug away all day and, and get overly concerned with it. Um, for me, I had a point on of 65 meters or 60, 60 meters. So it was like 65 yards roughly was my point on. That's like so perfect. Yeah. So 70, I had to aim a little higher and no, let me take that back. My mine was 60. Yeah. 63. So I never really crawled to 63. I just kept it at 60 and it was pretty basic. 70, I would just aim top of the target. And then 80, I would actually use my 50, 50 meter crawl and aim with my shelf. And I put my shelf right at the center of the target and, and shot it that way. So, you know, you just have to get, you know, creative on, on how you're going to aim at those distances and figure it out. Some people stack targets, like they'll put their, they'll put their uh, shelf on the bottom of the target or center target, look where their arrow is and then put their shelf up there. Those for people that shoot a little bit slower bows. But I've done that with longbow and uh, like traditional, it can be a pain, but like uh, Jason Westbrook shot really well that way. Um, Gary and Alan, I mean, they, they done really well with just the trad stuff, not being able to string walk. That's a different ball game entirely. Just figuring out how to aim without being able to crawl. Yep. And that's what they do. Like, like how some of us have to um, stack targets going up, they do the same gap and coming down. So if you ever shoot that round and you're gapping, sometimes you have to stack going down. So you put your yep. arrow tip up on the target and, and see where your shelf is and then aim off of that. And what's the closest target you guys shoot? What was it? 20 feet? 11 feet? Yeah, it's 20 feet? Close, yeah. yeah it's a walk uh, up. It's a walk up, right? Yeah. I think it's, was it 20, 25, 30, and 35? Yeah. Something like, feet. That. like that, yeah. And that's at a target, that, target. that's you're shooting either, either, is yeah, it a four, ver or four, down four, vertical? four, four vertical. Yeah. And then your spot is the size of, it's, the five rings, what, size of a 10? Maybe it's, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's roughly, it's roughly like an indoor target. Yeah. yeah. 10, you know, the spot is like a 10. And then your your four ring is like the nine eight, and then your three ring is like the seven six. Yeah, it's a fun that's a fun round. I miss shooting that round. Just where I'm at in PA, we just don't have field courses readily available to us. I know like New York, Adam has one, and maybe yeah, Lancaster areas. Yeah, yeah, they have some down that way. But like where I'm at, there's just nothing. There's nothing. Do you have field courses up your way, John? No. No, you don't have any. Bur Berwick has one or had one. I don't know if they still do, but that's like that's an hour plus drive. Yeah, but that's that's. I same actually kind have one at my club, and I just haven't utilized it enough, so I think I'm going to use it a little bit more. But yeah, where I'm very lucky, I have one just like two minutes down my road. I just I was so focused on fifty, you know. But Grayson, you have them down your way, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a ton of them down here. That's awesome. I've shot a, a ton of local field rounds. It, it's a, it's probably my favorite round, honestly. It, it is a ton of fun if you get a bow set up for it and you have a, a good game plan. It can really be a lot of fun. Have you shot your bow? Uh, no, I just fletched up some arrows. I've got it here, actually. I might shoot a couple in the basement tonight. I don't know. I Do you have your hunting, bo your hunting bows tuned, right? Yeah, that one is tuned. Yeah, good to go. But I fleshed up some uh, 2312s. I'm going to give those a go. 
Um, I have a couple different sets of arrows coming, so I'll play around a little bit. You spent, you're spending all that money that all the stuff you sold. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I guess I am kind of reinvesting <laughs> a little bit of it. I, I sold a ton of stuff, gave away a ton of stuff too. I still have a bunch. I mean, I have, I don't know, 10 or 12 dozen Carbon Express arrows, tanks and RZs, different spines and stuff. I, I'll, I might shoot them again one day. I don't know. Or end up giving them away. We'll see. Well, we're kind of talking about the indoor stuff now. It'd probably uh, be a pretty good segue to talk about that one question, eh, Frank? Yeah, let's do it. Um, I'm trying to remember. I don't want to paraphrase the question, but it was uh, just how's our, how's our outdoor tune and, and equipment differ and shooting style differ from outdoor yeah. and indoor? To the indoor. Um, do you, Grayson, since you're sort of just thinking about that, and do you want to do you want to start? Do you want to explain like you know the the immediate differences between the two and shooting styles? Uh, I think you commented too on another post somewhere. I don't remember we were and it was an it was talking about the differences between the two. I think. I mean, as, as far as the shooting style, you, I find that I have to be a little more aggressive shooting a further distance. Uh, just make sure I have more tension and it's always consistent tension in the right direction. Indoor, you can get a little bit, I guess, a little more lax on that. You just have to be consistent. You don't have to have as, as much tension or be as aggressive in your shot. Um, but outdoor, you really can't get away with relaxing any or you're going to drop out of the gold being that far away. Um, but as far as setting my bow up for indoor, I just have kind of a, a base setting that I go to. I don't know if it's going to be good at all, but I start in the same place every time and adjust from there. I don't even know if these arrows are the right spine for, you know, what I'm shooting. I haven't shot 23-12s in four years, maybe. So How many it may pounds? just be a waste of time. What, what, what's your poundage you're going to shoot or try? 38. I'm going to try. So they, I know they should be close, you know. For yeah, what they should I be really close. Yeah. Cause How many green points really are you going to try? Do what? How many green points are you going to throw in there? Uh, I've got the break-off top hats from 180 to 120, I think. So I broke a couple off to 150. I'm going to try those. Hopefully they'll work. It's going to be a heavy arrow, probably around 500 grains. So it's a little heavier than what I normally shoot, but a little more poundage than I normally shoot too. So. Yeah, you shot what, like 32 or 34 last year? Uh, 30, 36 probably. 36? Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't think I've ever shot 32. I shot some 32-pound limbs, but maxed out. And with some uh, shims in them before. Okay. That's what Never I did to my hunting. Two on the fingers. I did that to my hunting bow today to get it tuned <laughs> through two shims in there. <laughs> yeah. Those Rare things are magic. Yeah, really are. Um, yeah, so 2312, I mean, I, that's about, that's actually about what I shoot. I just shot, you know how we were talking about the difference between the RZs and shooting the, the fat shafts, and I was like frustrated because they weren't hitting. I retuned. Yeah, all you did is just change the arrows. You didn't change yeah, your bow. Well, I made a little adjustment, but nothing crazy. But today, I officially broke it down and retuned it. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was pretty good. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the uh, with the 23s for the time being and and give them a fair crack because you know, we all know the RZ shoot, but you know it is what it is with those. But yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with the fat chest for a while. See how that goes. Myself. Yeah, I'm like, you got time. 38 pounds for a month and see what you can do yeah we got nfa indoor nationals coming up in december six weeks no really is that the virtual thing yeah so that's yep. that's nfa indoor nationals that's the official tournament yep just There's like no... the archery but i think but i think that's supposed to be like the one that was supposed mm. to bring i don't think that's next year's no it's just this 2021 that's the is it is it really I think so. I think I'm so. pretty sure. Yep. Hmm. I don't know. I'll let you know because I'm looking at hosting a Pennsylvania one. And if we get it or I don't know how that whole thing is going to pan out. But I'm not going. I shoot like crap okay. at your place. Yeah. Well, you guys are in it. <laughs> you, I'm sure you're going to host one up there. But anyway. Yeah, Lonesome Road usually has one. Yeah. They're gonna, I know they're going to host it. Um, you know, It's in December, you say? 
Yeah, yeah so uh, Several first, dates. second, and third. They have the option to shoot the first, second, and third weekend, I think, in December, or second, third, and fourth. Yeah. Just 60 those. arrows or 120? That's a good question. I don't know if that's even out there yet. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I would like to think that it's 120. 20. But I, know. I guess we'll. Yeah, the only thing I know about is the dates. I don't, and then there's the the weekend right before Christmas. Yeah, the uh, they could pick the weekend before, you know, two weekends, and I think three weekends before. Yeah. It's up to the club. They get they have three different weekends to choose from. Yeah. Christy, how about your indoor setup? While we're on, um, I'm still experimenting. So, like, in fact, today we just realized that I probably need to change the spine of my arrows. So my, um, I'm still working on things that I'm changing in my form and it has changed even from the spring. So, um, I'm, I've played with, I'm still experimenting with what arrows I like. I, I tried some vintage today that were 500 spine and I was like super excited. Um, they were shooting really, really, really good for me. Um, I, I just haven't decided yet what I'm, what I'm going to shoot arrow wise. So I'm still experimenting, seeing what I like, um, playing with things working on um, alignment and release issues, having a little bit of a problem with my wrist. So I'm not shooting as much as I would like to be shooting because I'm trying to heal that. Um, it's, it's a problem I've been doing ongoing from before USA Nationals, about a couple of weeks before that, I started having issues with my wrist. It's been getting progressively worse. So I'm trying to, to rest it, but now we have NFAA indoors. And so that's kind of putting a burr under my butt that, you know, I, I really need to get going with this stuff. but. So it's a balancing act right now. So I'm not, I'm not settled on anything yet. I have dropped my poundage a little bit. I'm probably going to be shooting in the low 30s. So we're just, you know, I I don't have anything definitive yet as far as what I'm shooting. Indoor, Besides that, you can get away with that weight drop in, indoors though. It's only a couple pounds. It's only a few pounds. So I mean, I I know I was shooting 30 on the fingers last in last indoor season. And that worked uh, very well for me. I'm staying on the Uka limbs, but I have changed the riser. Um, and, and like I said, I'm just still experimenting with arrows. So I, I do kind of need to get that nailed down probably the next week or two so I can prep for NFAA. But, you know, right now we're just having fun with it still. So. And what riser is it? Yeah, I know you said, I saw you got a new one. The Win-Win ATFX. I think I'm saying that right. So, um you know, I really, really like it. And uh, we're going to see what we can do with it. Up until now, I've been shooting more like, you know, entry level risers. So this is my first higher end riser that I'm shooting. Um, I, I just wanted something, there's a big argument going, it's it's supposedly turkey green, but I call it teal. So uh, there's big arguments going on and uh, exactly what color it is, but you know, it's my baby, so I get to name it whatever I want. So I, I'm going to keep saying it's teal. It's, it's Atlantic, not Demer Teal, which is like an aqua. It's a Atlantic Ocean. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever. Algae Demer, green. <laughs> I, I now have two shirts. I got my teal sh jersey in, but the the uh, I also have what I I've named the like the Demer the Demer Teal like Demer Blue because it's blue. It's aqua. It's not. Yeah, it's not it's not a real teal there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is going to be a, a, a long debate between the, the two of us what teal is. Our teals are obviously different, so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Where, where, uh, speaking of, John, you and your teal, are you, are you sticking with the same setup, the same 20, the 27 inch? Um, so I think, um, yeah, I think this year I'm going to stick with the uh, XI. Um, it, I seem to get along with that riser really good. That's the one I shot uh, down at your place that I, I shot that really good half. And yeah. I think I'm going to stick with that one. It's It's been... The one that should have been the world record? Yeah, that's the one that should have been that Frank <laughs> just didn't feel like paying 35 bucks to register it properly. <laughs> Way to go, Frank. <laughs> I think Maggie had a world record at that time too. Oh, no, no. <laughs> they didn't count. They tied. It wasn't a world record. It was a, it was a national record. But, but uh, yeah, that was that was probably my most consistent riser for me. Um, it just fit my style a little bit better, I think. 
I shot some great scores with the uh, the XE27, but the um, the XIC just seemed for me to to balance out a little bit better. Um, it was more predictable for me, but yeah. So you're more than welcome. What kind of you put on the front of that? Are you um, only able to get wood in the, the top bushing? So the what I found for me to run that XI nice was I uh, I have a custom made um, disc weight for the front, and okay. then I ran a 16 ounce Yoast in the back. I tried running just yeah. So I had, it's weird. I had two weights on both sides. I tried running the heavy weight on the front and it it worked, but it just it seemed like it didn't work as well as kind of running one in the back as well. Um, so that's what that's probably what I'll be running. It'll be like right around six and three quarter pounds overall. Okay. So Sounds not too normal. heavy. Yeah, it's not too heavy, but not not too light either. Forty pounds, thirty-eight, forty pounds, something like that. Yeah, uh, probably going to be that thirty-eight, thirty-nine pound mark pound range. Um, arrow wise, don't know yet. It might be twenty-three twelves. Um, it might be, it, it might be aces. I I don't know. I'm going to try to, you know, venture out a little bit and try try some different arrows. It's been a it's been a long time, so. Um, it might be an AC, ACE or it might be an oddball like 22 series or 21 series or a 2312. I still have Everett's some leftover. Some, uh, some pro comps coming there, a pretty thin shaft. Um, I guess similar to ACE profile, probably a little bigger, but just parallel, not barreled. Yeah. Hopefully they, they do well. I want to try those and uh, the Super Drive 23s. The, yeah, the pro comp might be like, the banging arrow for the NFAA, sticking them all in that tiny circle. Yeah, these won't work for, you know, five five arrows per target. No, you'll start if you're if you're having a good day, man. You'll get a lot of deflections, especially yeah. packing five of them in there. Frank won't have any issue because he just doesn't shoot tight <laughs> groups, but he can shoot twenty sevens, no problem. <laughs> I don't know about that. Frank shooting full bores and not touching shafts. <laughs> you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> you show up. You're not coming to the October one, are you? Oh, what's going on in October? We have a double, the double eighteen meter on the twenty four. Uh, I don't know. Maybe. One's registr one's, re one's registration end. Um, it's ends the day before, but I mean the line times because I have to host in the tournament. It's single one shooter per bail. One is that Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. So you turn hunting season. Hey, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. I'm not he's hosting on Sunday. Sunday. Hey, yeah. hey, hey, you can't <laughs> hunt on Sunday, Frank. You can. You can soon. But no. <laughs> no, yes. The reason the Sunday one, we have the virtual one for the Bearboat Project. So the one that we did last month as a trial. So it's up to you. Anybody, shoot, anybody shoot that one? Does anybody care? Yeah, they shot it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just good. teasing. It was I'm just good. teasing. That's good. That's Tony, good. 60 arrows. Like, that's 60 arrows on Zoom and having actual, like, there was a, um, having two judges make the call for you and stuff. And it went. I mean, they were, they were done in about an hour and a half. Who's who's so, judging? Uh, I mean, I did. I did. And then uh, Jenny. um last um, She's from Hawaii. Her last name is escaping me at the moment. She kind of stepped up to want to try it, and it was an absolute okay. blast. Um, cool. I was going to say Elton's not doing it because he's out fishing with me. El yeah, I know. Elton's living in the river. <laughs> Every time I turn around, there's another post on Facebook with a with a fish in a net. Um, Dude, he, he kills me. I, I love that guy. <laughs> yeah. He's so positive. <laughs> um, well... I guess that's about it. I don't know. Any are we live questions? on Facebook? We are live on Facebook, man. Yeah. Any we questions? Had, I think we're we didn't really put I didn't put anything out there. There's not a lot of viewers left. I think a lot of people Nobody cares. Yeah, yeah. Everybody bumped off. We'll give we'll give them an opportunity if, if those who are watching if they want to uh ask a quick question before we um <laughs> well we got chrissy on there like let's uh let's give her 
you know, a shout out to trying to get more women involved and in how she's going about doing that and being oh. positive. Cause we definitely need, we definitely need the women pick up a little bit. Uh, the ratio is off a little bit, but yeah, it's coming. Uh, but there's, I, I think I was telling you guys, I know in my area, there has been quite a few more women are starting to pick up their bow. I'm, I'm super excited about it. So, and, and then just making a point, like when I was at NFA, we had, there was several like Joe Ed kids, like Ruby and some other ones. And so I was just going down and checking on them and saying hi. And we, we all did a, a little picture together. They were, they were great. So there's a lot of young women that are picking up bare bow right now. And so I am super, super stoked to see that. But there's also women that are in the adult age category that are picking it up. I, you know, there's the thing I love most is like seeing people who are trying bow for the first time. And a lot of times they're trying a, a, a traditional or recurve bow and, and you see them shooting. And so when I see them shooting, you, you see that look on their face, you know, and, and, and they shoot something really good and you can almost see them stop and kind of look around. Did anybody see what I, I just shot? Like, I love that feeling because I, I remember that feeling like that date, the second day I ever shot a bow and, and it just, it hit me like, I love this and, and I'm in trouble. So, and that's really what went through my head was the second day I shot, I was like, I am in trouble. I know I really, really like this and I'm going to keep doing it. So I make it a point, like I, I'm trying to be around when I, when people, new people are shooting and then going up and talking to them, go like, you really need to get into bear bow. Like, this is a wonderful sport. It's a great hobby. You know, anything I can do to help you. So, and I, and I know there's other people too, like Fawn and, and you know what, basically any of the women who shoot bear bow, like I know they're, they're they're reaching out to women too. So I really think that it's starting to grow. I've definitely seen it growing in, in Illinois in the Chicagoland area. So I'm, and I'm hoping that that's reflected all through the country. I, I'm hoping it's growing so that we can start really making a showing at things like Lancaster. I thought we had, we had, what was that? I think 62 women that had yeah, it Lancaster a, last year. And then we had a, really a lot. Good start. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot at USA indoor. I don't remember the exact number, but it, it wasn't a small number of women in all the age categories, but even the adult women had a, a substantial number of women. So yeah, a I'm lot really of hoping. the, a lot of the youth classes had more women than they did men. Yeah. Yeah. So the, especially like, you know, just that's, that's the way to go with the kids, right? Like get them excited, get them growing, but it's, it's also growing in the, in the here it's growing in the adult women too. So when I started out, I think I was the only one that was in my group. And now I think we have five or six. So that that's a huge number of women to join in six months. So yeah, it's definitely growing. And, and I hope it keeps, you know, the more, more exposure that women have, you know, doing archery and doing bare bow, I, you know, and, and people see us having fun doing it, you know, I think we're going to get more. So I'm working on it. I'm trying. You're doing a good job, Chris. You're doing a you're doing a great job, really. And and you show support to all of the younger shooters, to the other female shooters. You know, you while it's an ongoing joke, but at the same time, like you're 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 steamrolling through and making a name for yourself and a name for women's barebow in general. So I mean, you are taking on a role that is similar to what John did for the rest of us that got us involved in the sport, you know, over the years, you just got to have, keep, keep your career going in the right direction. And, you know, I mean, it's just, it's great having someone that's vocal and well-spoken, you know, and like I said, I don't know if we were, if we mentioned it here, but you're taking on a very similar role that, that Fawn has had. And, and it's now not just, fun anymore not that there wasn't other women that have done awesome things but now it's fun and you and then like the i call it the kumbaya episode the, wi the, the women of nationals like you guys were our most embarrassing <laughs> episode of all time oh my gosh it was so funny wow. fest was gross <laughs> because i keep telling you <laughs> but it it's was about cool. like i i intend fully intend to build a, a, an army of women that are coming for you guys you've had it too easy <laughs> You know, and, and we're coming and class then at the classic. Is that what you're saying? Like, oh, we're we're gonna we're gonna make you guys work for it. You, you don't get to like tiptoe anymore. No, no, we're coming. Keep it up. You're already two dollars in the hole. 
That's okay. <laughs> I'm perfectly, I'm coming. I'm getting closer every single time. Make you sweat a little bit. It'll happen. You had, you had me by like two points the first end of the Dakota Classic. I was kind of Yeah, like, two points, two points. I had, yeah. I had him sweating just a, just a tiny, just a little bit. Just a little bit. That's fine. Come on. <laughs> I'm bringing the women with me too. It's it's gonna Obviously be fun. He's waiting I'm for hurting. the because he's counting the dollars already. So, Grayson, are you scared? No, not so much. I, I I'm, I'm not. I haven't rested him at all yet. Really, not really. I've had uh, I shot against Fawn head to head a few times, and luckily I have not lost yet. So, <laughs> y'all don't She's scare really me. Good. She's really yeah. Good. So the first time, I guess the classic in 2015, we shot against each other and I was so nervous. It was my first tournament really. And I was like, I'm going to lose. There's no doubt. But uh, I just didn't want to miss the target. Uh, <laughs> and it ended up winning. I, I don't know That's how. A, that sounds like me and you, Dumber and Dakota. <laughs> yeah. It just came down to like who missed the target more. So I admit it, I missed. <laughs> but you know, that first round I was beating him. Just so y'all know, I was beating him. So I believe okay. that you all are Next capable time. of beating us any day, at any time. So yeah, there's a couple. There's a couple women that uh, you can't sleep on. Susan, when she's shooting good. Yeah, I think you know. uh, we shot head to head a couple times and just pra well a lot in practice, and she's got me before. I mean, she's if you miss an arrow or something, you know, shoot a eight, she can shoot, you know, all gold and tear you up. So. We gotta we gotta get her done with her her uh, house renovation and get her out shooting. She just shot a pretty good practice score the other day. Yeah, yeah like I'm getting ready to move. It. I'm getting ready to move down there next to her, and I'll be close to Paul Vogel and Robin and Jen. Oh, nice! You're RJ, moving to so. Springfield area. Uh, I'll be close to Springfield, not quite in Springfield. Um, okay. I guess more Fairfax center, okay. Fairfax area. So nice. You have to do some hunting yeah, with Paul. Yeah, yeah, I'll be 15 minutes from Norva, his club, where he shoots outdoor a lot. Um, probably 15 minutes from where Susan shoots. Be kind of in the middle of all of them. So, um, and, you know, I won't have any commute to work. I'll be two minutes so I can get off of work and then go shoot. It should be a, a totally different vibe for me shooting the next two years. So. Excellent. Excellent. Well... What else you got, Frank? Well, yeah, that's it, man. We're we're pretty much shutting her down. Everything no, but... recording. Oh, let's Good let's long. do a, let's do a quick shout out to. Those three monologues, Frank. It's long. That, that's long. <laughs> What's that? Let's do a quick shout out to uh, a couple record breakers um, that I'm aware of. I'm not sure. I, I probably missed a bunch of them, but uh, Aki from I hope I'm pronouncing his name right from Sweden. Um, he just shot a, a new 25 meter record, uh, tied my, uh, 50 meters, uh, both single and double round. Uh, Leo also from Sweden shot a couple of monster rounds. Uh, the, he shot a new 25, new 50 double and single, um, Chinsia just absolutely smoked the women's, uh, world record single and two day. So those are the ones I'm, I'm specifically aware of, but. So what is the the men and women's fifty meter record currently? Uh, fifty is six sixty five, um, and the two day or the double round is uh, six uh, six twenty eight, I think. Um, the women's uh, Chinsia shot like a six thirty some. Oh wow! And her, yeah, and her second round was right. It, it was close. I think she shot a six thirty seven. And the other one was right around 6.30 or 6.24, somewhere around there. Um, yeah, she shot two really good, strong, strong rounds, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. The only other couple of record holders that I know were was Maggie. Maggie um, broke the 25-meter uh, record by, like, 27 points. I don't – it was it was a pretty substantial. It was, like, a five-something. Five she shot – she's – She's working on some alignment things, but she's shooting well. Um, and we forgot we forgot the obligatory Rick Stonebreaker. <laughs> oh yes, and Rick. <laughs> Seems Rick. like you oh, shoot every day down there. Yeah, 
<laughs> Can we do like a slight memorial service for John Dillinger because he's going to be a master next year? <laughs> <laughs> I hope he was watching that. <laughs> Kick him out of the senior class. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. I think we're gonna we're gonna shut her down. Um, Chrissy, thanks for for joining us once again. Um, well, thanks, Chrissy. Congratulations. Thank yeah. you. It's always fun hanging out with you guys. So hopefully yeah. we'll have a couple of indoors that we get to see each other. That would be amazing. So so buy four Perfect. boxes of Wheaties, fill both bowls, and have the whole family have a get together <laughs> dinner. <laughs> That's a lot of Wheaties right there, buddy. <laughs> uh, you guys have a good night thanks everybody for joining us thanks for watching on facebook live um special thanks we got some new sponsors uh well one is obviously yoast archery products um yoast. yeah and and uh paul yager has, has stepped up to sponsor the podcast yeah well. yeah, yeah i'm sorry i sh I, I pulled a dilly <laughs> <laughs> paul, paul jager jager <laughs> Um, and, uh, one more arrow and you know, Martino, I know you, Martino. Met, yeah. Martino's sponsoring the podcast now as well. So one more arrow, check him out. It's just an archery brand. Um, he's doing some cool things, sponsoring some tournaments and whatnot, and really trying to grow the sport as well on, from a kind of a merchandise and, and, and brand, um, ways. It's a pretty neat little project he's got going on there. So I'll say shout out to him. Thanks everybody. See you later. Cool. Later. This episode of the Barebow Project Podcast was produced by me, Mick Chambers of the Archery Geek on YouTube, under the executive supervision of our producer, Frank Madonna. If you've gotten this far, please consider liking and subscribing to the Barebow Project Podcast. Thanks, everyone, and see you next time. Mm -hmm.